Welcome to this week's vlog everyone. We are uh, just here in the van and at home because I've just packed up this little Corolla onto the back of our uh, trailer here. Now, if you are a keen watcher of our uh, Instagram page or our online socials, you would have seen this car here get uh, a little bit well, it didn't get banged up, but it was already banged up. But basically, we do buy a few cars from time to time, which we do uh, vehicle flips with. Uh, so this one here, it's had a bit of a smash ola. Actually really lucky with that, because that is um, mostly it's superficial damage. So a uh, headlight, a guard, and a little bit of work underneath. So we'll straighten that out. We've got a guard already, we've got a headlight already. A bit of a scrape on the door, a bit of a bend in the bonnet. We'll just fix up a few things uh, and then we'll on sell that one. So that's going to be one project we're going to work on for this week. Next to that, we're also going to have uh, a few things at the workshop. So we're going to be moving our VL around, give you a little update on that. Uh, we'll get back into the copper project as well. So we've got plenty happening this week. I'm just about to head over to the workshop now. So <clears throat> we'll get in the car and we'll head on over. All right, we've got the Corolla at the shop now, so that's just dropped off, it's off the trailer. And we've got uh, the VL gonna go back on there, which is now dropped down in primer and uh, most of its body work's ready to go. It's at the point where it's sort of ready to be like rubbed and sprayed, but we've got a couple other projects we need to click off out of the way and we're a bit tight on space. So we're gonna throw that into storage for a couple of weeks, get these other ones finished off and bring it back. What's that? What's that? Headlight resto. Headlight resto. You ever done one of those before? Oh, I've done a couple. <laughs> Yeah, right. And one or two. Just a couple. Ooh, what's this? Plastic what's this? repairs. Mm -hmm. Plastic repairs on a little Mazda 3 that we've got out here. Plastic welding. Trying to recycle and resave stuff rather than throw it away. That's it. If you ain't broke, you know? If you ain't broke, don't, well, yeah. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. In this case, it is broke. So we're fixing it. So we're fixing it. That's right. Rather than binning it. Yep, that's what we do. Nice. Sander on the back end, I think it's 200 millimeter nine hole sander, sand off, roof sand off. Back is planted for dust extraction to just try and keep obviously the dust down and just be safe in the grass. 320 discs, 500 discs. I'm using a bare metal rattle cam primer on this job, being a cardio job. Then I need some 800 wet paper after that. I've got the primer, you need the paint. So whether you get that mixed up yourself, I have my own system, so I'll mix it up myself and make it clear. That'll be enough to get you out of trouble. You don't need a normal sander to do this job, it just makes it faster. You can just do it by hand, it just takes more time. So, what was the story with this car in the beginning? Why is it here? Well, this car was obviously sold to a friend of ours we do work for. Um, obviously, the paint has started flaking off this vehicle. Again, not uncommon for a car of this era from Japan to just not like Australian conditions. Subarus, Suzuki's, Toyotas, especially the headlights, they just hate the Australian sun. The sun is just so much harsher than most countries. So the paint's actually started lifting, baking away from the body, and whoever owned it before has attempted to 
DIY, fix it, and just rattle can over the top of it. So we've had to take all that off, feather out the paint where it's no longer flaky, and then start again basically. Reprime it, then re sand that, and then repaint it, re seal it. So there's some marks on the glass there from uh, previous repair. Yeah, so whoever's decided to try and sand this and fix it up has obviously slipped and used a much coarser sandpaper than necessary. You can see here, we've got like 80 or even 40 grit scratches in the window where they're literally rubbed into the window. So again, we have no issue with people trying to fix stuff. But also, don't be afraid to ask us a question first. We're trying to teach people how to do it the right way. Send us a message, ask us some questions. Like, I'm going to be doing this fun with a rattle pan. So, if I can do it, you can. All right, what's going on? Well, we are going to mix up some bog. And if you come with me, I'll show you what we need to do. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up, so that's why I have it circled there. But there is a slight dent here. You can sort of see there's like a, where it's been sanded more here, but not really there. So obviously I'm going to take that off. That's where it's going. You can actually see it better with the circle on. There you go. Making sure the hardener is mixed up. Because what happens when we don't put in enough hardener? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to scrape it out. That's right. I stitched bread up with that the other week. We've all been there, mate. You're not the first person to do it. You won't be the last either. I still do it on occasion too, mate. That's what I was about to say. It's <laughs> so weather dependent. Oh, it is. You could do one mix today and then tomorrow it's 10 degrees, especially here in Canberra because we have such a variation of temperature. And then cream hardener. I reckon that much hardener. It's going to go off pretty quick. I'm hoping. I need it to go off pretty quick. So you just keep mixing it till it's mixed. So for you guys doing this at home, it's not actually that hard. It's like playing with Play-Doh. All right. Literally, just apply it. You don't even need that much. And that's it. I made too much, but you might rather have more than less because you don't want to be halfway through and then have to make up another batch. I'm mixing the pearl now. So this car is a three layer pearl. So it requires a base coat, then it requires a pearl coat, and then it requires a deer coat. So it's a bit worth it matching the color. Um, yeah, definitely trickier. So that's where I'm up to. So now with the system here, I've used my Spectro. Again, I have the privilege of having one. I Spectro the color. I have the year, the model, obviously the color code. Um, and now I am mixing the pearl color by weight. So every color that comes up on there is obviously on our system. And then it's applied a certain weight to make the color. Look at that. Not bad for a quick rattle can job. It was great. Quick rattle can job. This is better than a quick rattle can job. Ooh, Look at that. You matched it well. It's just white though. Yeah, not just white. Same as that when I was mixing up the pearl for this three layer white pearl. Why would just white have red pearl in it? Hmm? Yes, that's when you know this is leaving. Explain to me why we have these templates. You want to find it back in the exact same spot. So we use a template as a guide. I've matched the angle on the tailgate, so I know if that line's where it needs to be. Straight off from there and it'll be as close as we can get it without actually measuring every letter, you know, off the bottom. Something like that. Do you love pulling off double-sided tape? Oh yeah. My favorite pastime. So 
Road. A little Suzuki, quick turnaround. Rattle can primer, so fast drying times, also cheaper, because it's for a car yard. If we had of edge prime this and prime this with proper like 2K primer, then we would have had to bake it and re-block it. And yeah, ultimately- It would have been off. worth what, twice the amount we're charging? At least, it would yeah. have been another half a day in it. So you're talking another five hours, four hours labor, you could be talking another five, 600 bucks, you know, it all adds up. Showing people what you can and can't do. Then we had to match our pearl color, clear it. it. Does help obviously having the booth and everything else. Don't be afraid to try guys. Like, there's good stuff out there. Looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. And just like that, we got another car here in this spot. It's unbelievable. This one is 79 series, which is having a rear camera issue. That's the little, the little bit there. So it's fine, all good. But then randomly it will have problems, like it'll just start glitching out. So I'm guessing it's the start of a faulty camera. It is, part of the problem is that it's crooked, but that doesn't really hinder its progress. No. Nah. Who knows, anyway, we'll um, maybe throw a new camera on it. They're not expensive cameras and we'll see what happens there, but that's about the only thing it looks like is going on with that. Short of that, we're doing some bigger speakers down here in the door pods. So we've got a, a door pod that replaces the pocket and goes with a hole here. Same thing for the rears. Just waiting for those speakers to turn up. I was hoping that truck was in, but it's not. Just start putting the door pods on and look at what's going on with that camera. I think there's something like a USB charger and something else got to go in here too. Just little things, simple as. Why are we replacing these speakers? Well, these speakers, we've, we've covered this before on our channel. If you go back and have a look at our 79 series video, where we did a full stereo system upgrade and we did a bunch of soundproofing. Long story short, 79 series cruisers, great value for money. Uh, just ask me, I'll tell you. Uh, you get these enormous four inch speakers here in the dash. And when you're driving, especially on the phone, if you're a person who's on the phone a lot, like a builder, um, basically you can't hear squat. And so putting a decent sized speaker in the front of these. Uh, today it's a six inch or a six and a half inch speaker. In the past when we did the Alpine pack package or a six by nine split. So uh, it will make a significant difference to the sound in the front of this car, no question. It's, uh, I've been talking to this guy about doing this upgrade now for, I think he's been a customer of mine for at least two and a half years. So uh, we're there, we've, we've got there. <laughs> We're finally making the chain. What? What do we have here? Welcome to the Kansas Collective latest unboxing. <laughs> the latest, yeah. I don't know about the latest. Ah, there it is. Some hell pine. Hell pine. Would you say it's halal pine? Anyway. Oh, premium! Premium type ha. Hard to get. Are they? Yeah, apparently so. Anyway, these are the newer Type R's, which we used to love using the old Type R's because they had really skinny, lightweight magnets on the back of them. Look at these behemoths with that. Enormous. But more power handling. They pump. Great speaker. And a pretty hefty mesh grill for the front as well, which actually screws in unlike the old ones. Yeah. The old ones just clipped on, so much better, much better. What are you doing here? This has a globe in here, tiny little fucker hiding in the back of this that isn't working. Just trying to get to it. Did you get it out yet? No. No. Oh, there we go. We're fucking, we don't even need to pull it out from the back. We'll probably get it from here. Come here. You know what you get for your 80 grand in your Land Cruiser? It's 80 grand plus. I think this this is a GXL, so this is probably even more than 80 grand. Yep, it's a paper. That's how you get the nice bright backlight here. This bit of paper. So good. Oh, took off on me. There it is. Little baby. It's a boy. Got the little globe, eh? You can see there he is. Little globe. Globetron, but you know, white doesn't suit this interior, so it's got a little cap, also known as a condominium. And it just slots on over the top of that. All right, let me put that on there. 
Oh, look at that. Green. Green, mate. It's like the green goblin. Oh, so now we're slotted back in and that's it. Job done. Did you get it in or what? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's in. Yeah. We're getting ready to do another car shuffle, but. Yeah, we yeah. are. Well, I put the USB in and then it's just the speakers. No cameras, please. It's going on, lad. All right, so we got our <coughs> door pod, door panel replacement here. And yeah, these ones here are quite nice because they're made of plastic. So when they go on, they look pretty schmicko. But uh, yeah, they've got somewhat precise measurement that you're supposed to line them up with. So this leading edge here is supposed to be about 11 mils, top and bottom. And it's supposed to be about 21 at the very bottom, which this looks pretty good. They have these little pieces that you slide into the uh, screw holes on the back. And these are designed that it says in the instructions you put whiteboard marker on them, but you don't really need to because you push them into the vinyl firmly wherever they're supposed to go. And when you lift it off, you have infinite where you drill all your holes, and then these just come back out with a 1 8, 3, 3 and a half mil, I think it's 3.2 1 8 drill bit and you drill all these out and then these come with these nice thick threaded black screw. Gives it a real OEM plus feel doesn't it? Yeah it does. And a cup holder in the back which you didn't have before. Put it there first. Cup holders in the back. Door trims are cut out and the pods are mounted. I've just trimmed out some metal in here and just put some paint on it to stop it from rusting. The other side's done. And then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna pull some wiring through here now. Back to the front, we do the front doors. The whole thing goes back together. On the inside here that's all back together and we've also got a dual USB charger which you can see there as well so yeah this is now licked we put this back together our headlight restoration jobs are all done and out the door as well so we are packing up and we are going home for the day